Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. The way you make a life worth living is actually providing customer service. The other way that you make a life worth living is that you don't try to be something that you're not. You see, every day I'm a man who's working his life back out of, well, traveling, should we say. Traveling without a vehicle because police officers lied and stole a federally protected business licensed vehicle. In fact, the police officers did not have a lawful right to commandeer my fully paid for business vehicle that was licensed solely to my business. Neither at any time did anyone in my family have the right to claim the right to go into that vehicle. Yet I had biological birth oriented family members who thought that they could just play in and play out of my car. Or was it actually the people at the impound in Indianapolis? Or was it police officers that thought they would have a good old time on things and property that belonged to me. When I got to my car, I found almost everything a disaster, not in any way handled the way that I had organized things. You see, I had a mission to finish some translations that my family, my Japanese family and my Japanese friends worked on for many years, a manufacturer's dictionary, if you will. And it was my lawful documentation that I received as a gift from a man in the company in which I worked for. But I took those papers with my family and we worked on it a long time. But when I lived in a subsidized housing place, someone kept playing in and out of my apartment without my lawful consent and without my permission, literally shredding papers and documents because they thought for some reason it was a fun old game. My guess it was 20 something year old men such as maintenance men or perhaps the bicultural couple where the wife worked as a representative for the company playing in and out of my house stealing my rock collection for her child or something like that every day i would find something new missing from my trunks that i had planned to settle my house with but after you've lost a family member after you've lost a spouse after you've lost a child you're not going to jump to put things down you might leave things in boxes you might leave things in trunks because you're trying to decide whether or not after 20 years of living elsewhere you really want to live in a space where Right now, you're temporarily residing. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and almost every evening, every sublime, beautiful evening before an incredible storm that's coming, I have some 20-year-old Arab trying to pretend that he is a black child of America. Isn't that marvelous? That a boy who sort of fed me and stole from me on campus is now playing up to me as if he's my pal literally walking 10 feet from me to have his fake phone conversation with what sounds like an automated person. You see, the difference between a child with a cell phone and a person in the military is the military has a whisper mode that goes only in the ears so that only people who are in that realm can hear it. Whereas when we're around people with regular types of cell phones, we can sometimes hear the other person talking on the other side. But if you've got that implement or that indent in your ear, your inner eardrum, or a very small, what should we say, hearing aid, people might not be able to see it today. There's also other ways in which a person can hear things. But people don't really think about how that works. We might think about the inaudible channels that we hear about when we're watching scientific or National Geographic channels showing the concepts of porpoises or elephants and how they grunt and groan and speak or how geese talk to each other and say, hey, our food provider is over there. And how marvelous it is that almost every morning a clan of 50, count them, 50 geese with mothers and fathers intact and I think uncles and aunts, if I can figure this out, I can't quite tell. There's usually two geese and two and one gander at least schooling their children of 30 count them 30 goslings and another family of good 10 coming after me in the morning saying okay you're up let's go where's our food and it's sort of marvelous because i sleep in lots of different places yet they always seem to find me and some bitch on wheels talked to me the other day and said if you feed them they can't fly and i'm like don't think so i've seen my geese fly plenty i've seen them go around and call at me like okay he's down there we're going after him and it's sort of funny when you're a person who loves nature and understands what nature does for us every day. You see, while geese may generally, in practice of good geesing, or being a good geese, be her herbivores, we know for a fact that starving, very hungry geese will eat just about anything except bologna. 
they don't particularly care for that I don't blame them I don't particularly care for it either but it's a cheap dollar store purchase my guest is talking really about these young men in their 20s and how incredibly inappropriate I've experienced college gentlemen in Champaign Urbana Illinois and even over at the mall how inappropriate these undereducated people are I hate to say it that way but it is inappropriate how they solicit how they try to talk how they try to involve themselves in a total stranger's life and I don't really care if they're lonely I don't really care if they're unattended I don't really care what their intentions are it's just their management of themselves shows them to still be in the age demographic of 12 or 13 while they be marvelously be of age of majority and I'm not trying to insult any man that doesn't have an education my late wife my late spouse did not have a full education until she came to America and I literally paid for that twice to go to university as well as to go to a local junior college or community college of which I eventually left working for but that didn't impact my ability to pay for her to go to that or for her to pay for her to go that what I'm talking about is the reality of life that a 20 year old is so immature in his thinking that he's gonna pretend to have phone conversations with an automated phone company near me so that he can then eventually walk over and say hey do you smoke and scope over what I'm carrying what I'm holding on to and what I've got there's always a childish person who wants to lie steal and cheat people out of their rights and the right is you don't have a right to look at my car you don't have a right to look in my bags and briefcase you don't have a right to put your hands in my backpack you don't have the right to put your hands in my motherfucking pocket or any jeweler's pouch that I might be carrying because when you tell somebody who you know in the black community that I might have an iPhone something it might be someone else's that I'm holding on to for them but when you steal headphones from me when you steal cords from me when you steal plugs from me you are stealing from me and what you're saying to God is God I'm a thief and I don't want any blessings from you because I don't believe in thee what a shame for you what an embarrassment you are to your own self how lack of a pride do you have in your own personhood that you think you have the right to palm or pilfer or steal from a human being who's homeless you see the liars of the world like to steal like to commandeer like to try to teach lessons like try to be big brothers or big sisters to people that they have no relationships with they destroyed them long ago through their inappropriate behavior through their constant talk of sexuality which is none of their business and openly they just never stop in life if you're a person of God you recognize that the human body belongs to the individual and God always says do these things in remembrance of me when we take communion to be reminded of the sacrifices that the Lord Jesus Christ paid for any person regardless of their religion regardless of their predilection for their version of Christianity or Muslimness or Sikhness or whatever the hell their religion is but here's what I know about the good books of the world they certainly say thou shall not steal and yet we have plenty of people plenty of students being allowed into our motherfucking country by administrators of college campuses not thinking about the future of America and what social graces these children completely and utterly lack to function appropriately with our own American students and the American adults that serve them every single day in food services and maintenance in campus restaurants and every place they go to play.